Alright, g'day everybody, and welcome to another Pow Wow podcast. This is Dr. Colin speaking, and uh, with me I've got some friends. You may know some of them. I've got Freak Sir. Yo! Who you'll remember from previous podcasts. Yeah, uh, we've so also got Picardi. The person who invented the door knocker won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, that's his introduction forever now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we got Crybabe. No. <laughs> There's no way you can top that entrance. <laughs> just, just, I no. had that plan for a bit. <laughs> yeah, good job, Bacardi. Okay. All right. So um, <laughs> now uh, in this is stall- installment, we're not. Uh, we don't have any speci- specific theme that we're going to go with, like in previous podcasts. Uh, we're just sort of going to do a bit of a free for all, aren't we? Yep. A free for, a free for all. It's a, yeah, it's like a what, if you guys have got got stuff that you can offer up, like if you've got anything that you want to share, just like bam, just offer it up. So, um, like if you if you can think of any uh, questions that you want to like address to the rest of the nuts um, in this podcast, just you know, be like, yeah, hey, I got a thing. But um, okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna start off because I've got something I want to talk to you guys about. Yeah. All right. Now, um, if you go into any supermarket, like Coles or Bullies or whatever, uh, and you go to the the counter, you'll have those impulse buy areas. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, you probably would have seen like the kids magazines that they have there. Mm-hmm. So it's like a little like half size magazine with a, like a, a toy strapped to the front. Yeah. It's worth about like you know fifty cents, but uh, I, I got one of them. I got one, and it's um. What the magazine or the toy? I got, well, I, the the toy came with the magazine, but I got the magazine. Oh, okay. 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 Um, it's called Crash. The magazine's called Crash with a K. Okay. Heard that one. <coughs> okay. Now um, um, I got this one because it has um, well, it has Ghostbusters in it, uh, and on the ba- on the back page on right, the back you're cover, it's you got, got the it big. For yourself? Sorry? You mean you got it for yourself? Mm, no. Anyway. <laughs> uh, on, the back, on the back page, no. it's, like, on the back cover, it's got a big picture of the, the Ghostbusters poster. But on the front, okay. um, yeah. it's got, it has a picture of the Ghostbusters and stuff. But I didn't actually pay attention to what it was actually saying on the cover. And it's got a really like hard journalism style thing in there. Okay, now... I don't know if you're familiar with these kind of publications, but there's some really hard-hitting stuff. In this one, uh, so this is the, uh, I don't know, the August issue for 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, headline, the, the top top billing story is Ghostbusters versus John Cena. John Cena! Exactly. So, um... John Cena thing. So literally, like, I'm, I'm going to try and... Here we go. So on page 18, um, it's oh. a double-page spread, okay? Yeah. And it's, it's literally Ghostbusters versus John Cena. They're, they're weighing up the stats of the, the entire Ghostbusters team from the new movie versus John Cena on his own. Right? You, all, you should do it with everyone. You should... Why? By John Cena. All... All movie ratings should be judged by how accurate they are close to John Cena. Exactly. And, what? And this this no. section this section of the magazine is actually called Crash Clash. Both spelt with a K. K, right. Yep. So um Hi. All right, so I'm going to read out uh, the stats for um the Ghostbusters and then I'm going to read out the stats for John Cena and you guys have got to tell me what you think. Who's who's going to win out of the two? Okay. So listen. Okay. Uh, so Ghostbusters status. In this year's reboot of the movie Ghostbusters, Erin Gilbert, Abby Yates, Gillian Holtzman and Patty Tolan are four women who unite to save the world from the evil demon Rowan. Mm-hmm. Uh, style. The female Ghostbusters team generally wear matching long light brown jumpsuits with orange stripes along with sturdy black boots. Personality. Erin, Abby, Gillian and Patty each have different personalities. That's always a good, good, good thing. But, another hive mind. This yeah. is already a good start. Uh, but are all highly intelligent and dedicated to the cause of being supernatural warriors. Okay, friends. When finding ghosts, these four women rely heavily on each other for support, laughs, and company. 
Skills. This is the important bit. Each Ghostbuster has unique academic skills and specialized knowledge that help them combat evil. The team also have access to some impressive high-tech weapons. Mm -hmm. Alright, you got that? Yeah. Alright, you're all you're all au fait with the Ghostbusters stats? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that now, sounds right. This is important. This is John Cena's stuff, alright? He's okay. got the same criteria, but you know, well, we're, we're obviously comparing. Okay? Oh. So gotta keep keep listening. Okay. So status. John Cena is a 15-time WWE World Heavyweight Champion and 5-time US Champion within the professional wrestling world. Style. Standing around 6 feet tall, they're not exact there, you know, they, they could work in his favour or not. So standing around 6 feet tall, Cena has an athletic body and a casual style, mostly wearing long shorts, t-shirts and baseball hats. Alright? Mm -hmm. Personality. A passionate and hard-working athlete, Cena has a positive attitude and lives by the mottos hustle, loyalty, respect, and never give up. Mm -hmm. Friends. Cena has ongoing support from a close network of family and friends, as well as from a battalion of fans all over the world. Skills. This talented wrestler has also dabbled in acting, rapping, rapping guys, and is a well-known for his charity work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Rapping like, like in burritos or, or, or Christmas presents? <laughs> or what sort of rapping? I don't know. I'm guessing they're talking like Snoop Dogg kind of stuff, you know. Oh, okay. John Cena. Oh, so glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I right. wish I could be in you. Okay, so be in you. Okay, he wants he wants to be have been you. <laughs> so well, I, what is a be in you? Is is that a is, is that a, a woman? It's like a hat a, it's from a, South yeah. America. It's yeah, an illegal I know. punch. It's a legal punch. Okay. Or <laughs> an illegal. I think it's a baseball term where you throw a baseball at someone's head. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so here's what we're going to do. So I've gone through all those things with you. You guys yes. have to tell me what you think. So, uh, Picardi, mm -hmm. based on all those bits of information, who do you think would win in a fight? The Ghostbusters or John Cena? Hmm. 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 Now Laser powered mind. weaponry. Yeah, keep in mind the Ghostbusters each had their own personality. Oh yeah, good point. Mm. Laser powered weaponry. Yeah, what about it? I think that would have damaged somebody badly if you shot them. Okay. Then you can capture the ghost of that person. But but John Cena has known been known to rap. Oh good point. Mm. <laughs> I love how that's a comparison. Laser yeah. weaponry against rapping. That you can clearly <laughs> notice the difference there. Right, so this is a tough one, isn't it? Alright, so Picardi. Yeah Picardi. man. I, man, they they should have just done that in Ghostbusters. They should have just went up to Rowan and started rapping at him, not yeah. freaking laser weapons. Yeah. All right, screw well, that. Well I think I, I, I was thinking high power weaponry, but now you just mentioned the rapping, I think it would be a tie. A tie you reckon. Okay. Yeah. Freak stuff. Yo. What do you reckon? Is it Ghostbusters or John Cena? Who are you signing with? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. They're, 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 both, they're both powerful contenders. Mm -hmm. um, What's swaying you at the moment? Uh, uh, the wind. The wind is swaying me. <laughs> um, I'm slightly rocking back and forth. Um... My chair might need to be fixed a bit if the wind is pushing me. So, uh, <laughs> <coughs> um, so who who do you reckon would win, who, Ghostbusters or John Cena? What's what's the thing that you reckon is? I don't know like? because like, like I don't know. <coughs> is it like all four of them against him, or yeah, is it's it all four just, Ghostbusters against John Cena on his own? Is this like a legit fight, or is it just stat fights? Well. Let's say it's a legit fight, but we've looked at the stats to try and work out which one is most most likely to win. Okay. Uh, 
What was his last skill? His last skill was like charity or something? Um, his that? last skill was that he's known to work with uh, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Okay, Make-A-Wish Foundation. All right. Yeah. Well, a guy who does Make-A-Wish Foundation, he, w he wouldn't hurt four ladies, would he? But except for except for Patty. Patty always has that power to compel people. So, um, yeah, she's, the power she's of Patty does compel you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, so, so uh, who are you signing with? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Just because of pow power, no, no, no. Just because of Patty's pow um, empowering ability, I, I think I'll just go with the Ghostbusters. Okay. So Compels people. Yeah. All right. So we got a tie from Big Hardy. We got uh, one to the Ghostbusters from Freakster. What do you reckon, Cry Babe? I say Ghostbusters all the way. Ghostbusters all the way. No question. Four against one. Okay, but it is John Cena. <laughs> But four against one. High-powered weaponry. Really intelligent people who do science. Are you John saying Cena. that John Cena's not intelligent? Yeah, John Cena... Yeah, I was about to say. Science. I was like, wait a minute. He has dabbled in acting. Science. <laughs> okay. High-powered weaponry. Four of them. So we've literally covered, like, the entire gamut of the options here. So <laughs> let's look at the final stats that, uh, that Crash actually list in their article. Okay, so their opinion on status. John Cena takes out the status stakes with his world's records and career achievements. Okay, so that one goes to John Cena. Style. The Ghostbusters score style points for their practical and comfy looking jumpsuits. Okay, so it's pretty even at the moment. Okay. Right, personality. Both Cena and the Ghostbusters are dedicated and hard-working, so it's a tie. Alright, so no one's coming out the clear winner at this point, are they? No. no it's pretty close. Alright, friends. Here's, here's a big one. We can't argue with Cena's millions of loyal fans. Alright, so obviously... You could argue with them. Yeah, I That's know. I was like, you can you. argue with them. <laughs> what do you mean? All right, it would so take a while, but... So, as we can see, the editor of Crash is obviously one of those misogynists that Sony keeps talking about. Yeah. You know, ain't no bitch is gonna bust no ghosts. Yeah, that's right. All right. And the final thing is skills. The Ghostbusters' awesome weapons give them an edge over Cena's wrestling talents. So that, that goes in your favour, Picardi. That's what you pointed out. Yeah. All right, so Stannis goes to John Cena. Those are rapping. Style goes to Ghostbusters. Personality is a tie. Friends goes to Cena, skills goes to Ghostbusters. So mm. literally, according to <laughs> according to Crash Clash, it's a tie. Oh. Right. I now, think something's afoot here. I think this is the most accurate review I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what's going afoot because it's so accurate. Seriously. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Here's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. What? Because it's we've got one one vote for a tie, one vote for John Cena, and one vote for Ghostbusters. Yeah. And because there's literally no differentiation between the two in the magazine, here's what yeah. we're going to do. Okay. It comes down to a coin toss. <laughs> okay. All right. I so. Who, asked, who? Okay. So heads. It's the Ghostbusters. Yeah. Tails is John Cena. And if somehow it manages to land on the line, on the edge, uh, that means that we really shouldn't be talking about this because it's a stupid topic. All right. So... <laughs> <laughs> so who calls, who calls heads? I'll call head. Okay. Who calls tails? I call tails. All right. Let's see how we go. Fingers crossed. It's Tails. No. So it's a tie. Tails, John <laughs> Cena. John Cena takes out the entire Ghostbusters team and is subsequently jailed for his misogynistic attack on these four wonderful, wonderful women. So, oh well. There you go. Um, that was an experience. So, uh, if you're interested. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you're interested, 
Crash Magazine August edition is available now. And um, if, you, if you're really interested, you know, you can win tickets to WWE Live Australia. Um, or you can win a PS4 and Ghostbusters gear. Um, but presumably only if you're under the age of 12. So, there's that. All right. Oh, my mind. <coughs> Does that work? Is your mind blown? Have you been sufficiently blown? Uh, g- g- no, because it was Ted. It was tails, not heads. Did you oh, been well. officially blown up? Okay. <laughs> Several times in the last gaming session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right. Just checking. So, um, I'm going to. Turn this over to you guys. So, who uh, has an idea of what they would like to talk about next? I don't know. Do we ever have an idea of what to talk about next? Like, I seriously, don't know. we've never done this before. So. No, I, exactly. That's what I mean. Um, all right, uh, well, Picardi, you've been reading a bit on Twitter about the uh, so-called election in the United States, haven't you? Oh. Uh, <laughs> If I read, I just mean skim on Twitter, and by Twitter you mean just seeing everyone just diss Trump, mm. because that's the kind of people I follow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what, what's your opinion, based on that, what's going on over there in uh, the uh, good old US of A? I think um, people are really trying to push people to vote for either Hillary or Trump and don't go to a a third party because unlike in Australia where you can vote for like the Greens or something um, that actually counts they can actually get their votes count for something afterwards but in America say you got 45% voting for Trump 30% voting for Hillary and maybe a couple more voting for other groups those other groups are just cut out, and basically it's the highest percent. So Trump would win that, even if the others put their votes behind, was trying to put their votes behind Hillary. So what you're saying is, the system over there is rigged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but nice then again, we can't. Statement there. Well, we, well, <laughs> I think ours is not that great either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, if you had to vote between say Donald Trump and John Cena oh <laughs> my god <laughs> who do you this think is pretty obvious. If this is, okay I'm obvious. out if this is the conversation we're having I'm out the, the, the answer is obvious it's the Ghostbusters high powered lasered weaponry who would win yeah. <laughs> not the Ghostbusters themselves just the weaponry just yeah, the, wep- the weaponry they have open. a really good platform on lasers <laughs> You know, I like I like Donald Trump's war policy, but I don't know the Ghostbusters have got lasers. <laughs> Disco up in this bitch right here. Saying, they don't have lasers. They got other thing, proton packs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. All right. So that's that's um that's Big Hardy's insight into the U.S. election. Yeah, that the oh, no, no, here's here's oh, my John final Cena. verdict. Your verdict, yep. Yep. Um, John Cena. Three Cena. nuclear apocalypse out of five. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> we're we're turning this into Fallout. Actually, I heard someone actually did that. What did they do? Someone actually did uh, like they've decked out a character that looks like Donald Trump in Fallout Four. How did that go? Uh, apparently, it's hilarious because the character. Literally does cause an uh, apocalypse, so there you go. <laughs> True to life, um, then. Yeah, pretty much. Alright, so here's one I, I would like to ask you, Freakster. Okay. What is floating your boat this week? What's what's the thing that's got you excited <laughs> this week? <laughs> what's got me excited this week? I, I don't know, man. Um... Uh, I, I don't know. I guess the only thing that I'll be have to I have to say that I'm looking forward to was it's only going to be turning up next week. Is it next week or the week after? I don't know. Well, you haven't told me what it is. It's Suicide Squad, clearly. Oh yes. So that comes out this Thursday. Is it this Thursday? Yeah. Or what? Yeah, because oh, it's the tw- it's um, the end of July at the moment, so it's meant to come out on the uh, the fourth of August. 
Oh, so I bumped it up a bit because it was originally the 14th, I think. But uh, yeah, they've, they've moved it forward a bit. Probably because they're riding that tidal wave of uh, goodwill from the public from Comic Con. And uh, they want to make sure that they, <laughs> they get in early enough that they can get those people to actually watch the movie. Yeah. So, um, all right, well, what's, this, what's some of the things that uh, you're looking forward to in Suicide Squad? Um, I, I actually. According to, like, someone did an interview... Oh, yeah, they did... It was really weird. There was a thing where they did an interview in, in um... Shit, uh, uh, uh... Mexico, I think? And it was with the Suicide Squad, so it had the director, Will Smith, Margot Robbie, and that guy who plays Diablo in it. <laughs> which I feel really bad, the fact that I don't know his name. It's all right, but, we'll fix um, it in post. Sorry? We'll fix it in post. We'll, we'll yeah, put yeah, his yeah. name up. Yeah, we will. We will just everyone make sure they blame Freakster. The um, uh, uh, yeah. So they had first off, it blew my mind because they the, these guys were all speaking to them in Mexican, and I was and uh, and they all like started answering in English. I went, damn, I, she's multi talented and freaking, you know, Margot Robbie and 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 Will Smith. They're all speaking like they're answering. I was like, what the hell? Until I realized they have someone translating in their ear. But anyway. Um, uh, yeah, they were pointing out how he, well Will Smith in particular said that he was he found it difficult playing his character because he didn't understand the concept of someone being able to get paid to take a life. He didn't he he couldn't wrap his head around it. He even said it was difficult for him to to conceptually accept the character. Right. So I like I don't know like. I'll be excited. Well, I'll be interested in seeing what he did about it, because he said it, it it was difficult for him. So, I don't know. So, who do you and reckon, like, apart from Margot Robbie? Because we know Margot Robbie's going to be fucking awesome, all right? We'll just yeah, put her to yeah. the side. Yeah. Here in this little booth that says "most awesome actor in the movie." All right, we're going to put her, her over there. on Neighbours proves it. So, <laughs> and Eliza and uh, Elephant Princess, yeah. Yes, that, those two episodes she was in. Um, so Did you just watch them though? They're awesome Anyway, sorry Okay. So out of all of the rest of the cast of Suicide Squad Who do we reckon Is going to be like the, the surprise like star Like the person who's going to jump out And be like wow I had no idea They were going to be so good I, Hey I didn't even know Cara Delevingne was in it How did you not know Cara Delevingne was in it? Yeah I don't know Apparently uh, Apparently uh, people ragging about how bad she's an actor, act, actress. So, so you think what that Cara Delevingne is going to be like the surprise star? No, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic or something. I don't know. Like it was just the fact that I I thought I'd bring it up because considering I just recently watched um, James, uh, what was it called? The Late Show with James Corden or whatever, mm. and they did a thing called Drop the Mic, and she was in it, and Dave Franco was in it. And they're all, they're all, the main, like, the main insult that they had was how bad her acting is. So I just, I'm, I'm a little bit, I don't know. You're on the fence? Worried. Yeah. Like, I don't know, a little bit worried about what will happen when we, when she turns up in Suicide Squad. Um, hmm. Her background is in modeling. And as hmm. we know, most people that start out in modeling are really, really good at modeling. All right, so um, Picardy and Crybabe, have you seen anything about this new Suicide Squad movie? No. No. You haven't seen <laughs> anything about it? No. Okay, so you don't know anything about the film whatsoever? Nope. I know there's a squad of people. Are, are All right, here's, here's your homework, guys. All right. Oh, no. You, <laughs> you are to watch at least one of the Suicide Squad trailers this week. No, because out. I'm in lockdown. In lockdown? Yeah, I'm not going to watch any of the trailers until I have to watch the movie. But you're going you're, you're to watch the movie without any idea of what the movie's about? Yeah. Is that... Well, technically, that's I've already got a vague doing. idea. I've watched a cartoon animated Suicide Squad, so I've sort of got an idea of the characters. So. Alright, alright, alright. I don't all right. have any idea of that either. I've, that's, I don't even dude, know what you're talking about at all. Okay, <laughs> Dr. so... Dr. Dr. Colin, completely that's in the dark. Technically, that's what we're doing, Doctor Colin. We we don't we don't know what's happening in the in. We know who the characters are, but we don't know who what the 
storylines about or anything like that. Well, no, but we know a bit about the movie. At least a little bit. I wonder if Batman's going to be in it. So, I'm, I'm going to give like a rundown for both the viewers and for Crybabe's benefit. Okay? Yay. So, this is a movie that takes place within the, the, uh, the DC cinematic universe. So, the same universe... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Does Crybabe actually want a rundown on... Yes. Okay, cool. All right. She Let's wants to be included. All right? Don't, don't you... No, I know she wants to be included. I thought she had like a whole thing where she was just like, I'm going to not hear about any of this until the movie comes out don't, and then I'm going to watch the movie. I don't even know what this is. I have no idea what it's about. Oh, happening. okay. Yeah, don't you be mansplaining for her. Don't you be assuming that you know what she wants. She's a confident, self-sustaining woman. She knows what she wants. Anyway. <laughs> Okay. Suicide Squad is set in the DC Cinematic Universe. It's based on a series that uh, DC Comics published, which is they get a whole bunch of the uh, the really popular villains and they team them up together to do suicide missions. And uh, we don't know what the mission is in this movie, but we know that there's Harley Quinn, uh, Deadshot, Killer Croc, uh, Captain Boomerang is in it. Um, who else we got, Freakster? Katana, Do- uh, Captain Boomerang, considering you just talked about him, mm-hmm. um, and Diablo, I believe. Yeah, Diablo's and, oh, and, um, pyrokinesis. He's he's hot. Yeah, and uh, oh, dude, what's his what's his name? Is it actually Flag? Rick Flag. Yeah. Flag? Okay. So yeah, Rick good. Flag's like the boss of the the team. So, um, so they're all being sent off on a mission, and somehow the Joker gets involved as well. So the Joker's going to be in this movie. Okay. Awesome. So there you go. I know that um. When one of my friends from work saw my new Harley Quinn cup, she asked me if I was going to see, su- see Suicide Squad, and I had no idea what she was talking about. So I'm just like, no. <laughs> and she's like, but it has Harley Quinn in it. I'm like, it does? Big Hardy's going to be watching Suicide Squad trailer with you this week, so that you can uh, get a bit of an insight into what the movie is before... Hopefully, we'll be able to see it and review it in a future podcast. Yes. Beautiful. All right. So, that brings us to you, Crybabe. What's something that you've uh, found out this week that you'd like to share with us? This week? Not much, but last week we did go to Queensland, which was fun. All right. What did you do in Queensland? We went to Movie World, Mm -hmm. where I got my Harley Quinn cup. Good. That was it? Um, (laughs) <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, that was the only thing we, we did, just went to rides, Queensland. There was two rides that were closed, which was really disappointing, because one of them I really wanted to go on, which was the Superman ride. Mm-hmm. But it was closed? What really disappointed me was that on the website, like, it didn't, like, it wasn't, like, popping up saying, look, we're doing maintenance, some rides might be closed. It didn't have that. So it was on the website. Just hit it. You didn't tell me? I did. I found that on the day. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I was no. standing next to you at the place saying, oh, look, these two rides are closed down for the day. It says oh, so on the okay. website. Oh, okay. After I searched, closed down rides. It was the off season, so it makes some sense for them to close down some stuff. Okay. Yes, but they should have had something when we brought the ticket saying, you know, it's off season, roads might be closed for maintenance. That way I wouldn't have been all excited to go on these rides and then go, oh, no, they're closed. I just wish I could have gone on the Wild Wild West ride again. Really? Yeah. Wild Wild well, West. That's about the only time the anyone's wanted to really have anything to do with Wild Wild West. Wait, was that, was the Wild Wild West one with the, when you're in a log or something? Yes, the yeah, water one. Water. Yeah, 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 cool. I it would have been nice because it was really hot up there. Oh, really? Like 27 yeah. degrees. Damn. Well, for those playing at home, that's 27 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Yeah. <laughs> and for those <laughs> others playing at home, it's 20 degrees <laughs> Celsius in Brisbane, which is warmer than Melbourne. And why is that, Picardy? Because they live closer to the sun. What? <laughs> 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 because they're closer to the equator? <laughs> No, let's roll with that. <laughs> They're closer to the sun. <laughs> Literally, a landmass section is closer to the sun. Okay. Right. <laughs> it levitated into the air closer to the sun than the actual landmass it's connected to. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's roll with that. 
Uh, signs by Picardi. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's yeah. right. So, did you guys get to meet any of the uh, the superheroes up there in Movie World? Yes, we saw a parade. Mm. That was kind of cool. Who did you meet? There was Batman, and there was Catwoman, and there was the Flash. Who else was there? Tweety. Superheroes. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Sylvester. <laughs> Superheroes. <laughs> I love that. That's all. Wonder Woman. Was it? Oh, yeah. the, the Green Lantern. They had the um the new Fifty Two ser- type heroes, except for Batman, who was, you know, um, Dark Knight Batman. Of course. You, you mean Christian and, Bale? Batman. Yeah, and um, Superman was isolated in a tower of ice. Superman. <laughs> what? <laughs> he, he has he's, he he's, he travels around in a fortress of solitude. I'm pretty sure the Fortress of Solitude doesn't travel. Well, his one does. <laughs> yes, it was on wheels. <laughs> has a has a smoke machine and everything. Wait, it on was it playing the final upset. countdown? By you. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So he was stuck inside his? No, no, no. He could walk oh. out of it, but he, he goes on top of it and like he extends. Like it's a weird little structure. So oh, anyway, yeah, so, uh, was the uh, more superheroes? Um, Scooby Doo there at least the mystery yeah, Scooby mystery Doo squad. And Scooby and Doo and Shaggy were, but the rest of them weren't. Weren't. Oh, so no Velma. Disappointed too. Yeah. The Scooby Doo ride was terrifying. I loved it. Terrifying. Terrifying. I loved it. It's more terrifying for me because I feel like it's too rickety for me now. Like, like I feel like I could actually fall out of it. <laughs> I just didn't like it when it was dark and we were going backward. The kid in front going. of us didn't like it either. No. <laughs> The kid in front of us started crying. I was just like, oh no. <laughs> and she was like completely terrified. Well, I was just a little bit terrified. She was completely terrified. There's yep. a difference. The, uh, um, yeah. the Arkham ride was pretty good too. Yeah, the lethal weapon ride was good. It was not the <laughs> weapon, it was the Arkham Island <laughs> Thank you very much. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they changed it from Lethal Weapon to Arkham, so. Yes, I know. I went on the Lethal Weapon. And the good thing is we didn't have to hear the um the guy the 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 bad um Joker and Harlequin talk multiple oh, times. Damn, like we did last lucky. time. Yeah, no, I know. Them. Oh, okay. Fair enough. But I do like what the um the, the ride operator says. She what actually does he say? she actually goes bye bye when you when you go. Like, like in a you scary never come book. back. <laughs> oh, uh, for a second, I thought she she said like Harlequin. No, she said that if you're never she. coming back. Oh, okay. Never. Oh, you didn't come back, did you? Nope. I'm yeah. a robot. Yes. <laughs> I'm a torch. Okay. I'm, what? You're a watch. Torch. Oh, a torch. Okay. If what you watch Shauna, the have it, have any of you seen Shauna? Shaun I've never the been anime. I haven't Obviously seen that. not. No. But cricket then noises here. Un- then you will not understand what I mean by torch. <laughs> okay. You must watch Shauna, and then you'll understand my meaning by I'm a torch. Okay. Right, so you got it. You, you heard it here first, guys. You've got to watch. Who is it? Shauna. 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 You got to watch Shauna. Yes. Uh, yeah. Not Shauna the Dead. Shauna. Not Shauna the Dead. Yeah. Shauna. <laughs> so what's Shauna about? <laughs> um, yeah, I was like, I was about to ask. Shauna is an anime that's um, about people who are fighting all the mysterious things that happen, and like the normal people are oblivious of that it's happening, and you've got your the the this, and when your soul gets sucked up by some of the bad guys because they suck people's souls, they eat them. And then to make it so that then it doesn't change the balance of the world or anything else, or they're not missed too much, they become torches. So that when they when their soul gets sucked up and they get eaten by these things, they then become torches, which means that it they're a, a fragment of themselves, and they their memory the memory of them is slow their existence is slowly fading. So it's not just them themselves as a person. It's no one will remember them. They're not in photos anymore. Things like that. 
So when they're a torch, they're just like a flame. And then when their existence slowly goes out, and then they're not there anymore. So they're just there to make it so that they didn't all disappear at once. So is this like an allegory of Stalinist Russia? <laughs> Pretty sure Whoa. from the start that it's set in Tokyo. Whoa! Holy and shit! And it's got nothing it to do dark. with that. Oh shit! It went dark. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! You turn the light back on then. <laughs> I will, just... man. I need a torch. <laughs> 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 uh, on on point there, freakster. All right. <laughs> Well, there you go. That's, oh. that's Crybabe's anime recommendation. It is anime, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anime recommendation. Yes. I don't know if it's Shauna or Shana, actually. <laughs> Maybe it's Shana. Well, okay. if, you, if you Google Shauna and it comes up with anything other than an anime, it's probably the other thing. Shana. Yeah. 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 We've talked a little bit about uh, John Cena. We've mm. talked about the American election. We've talked mm -hmm. about Suicide Squad talked about Warner Brothers Movie World, Hollywood on the Gold Coast, and we've gotten a, uh, an anime recommendation from Crybabe. Now, is there any uh, questions that you guys have thought up while we've been talking about uh, you know, something that you might want to ask the rest of us? Well, I haven't got a question, but I've got something else that might be interesting to look at when it comes out. Okay, what is that? Um, I think it's Kubo and the Two Strings. What is Kubo and the Two what Strings? The oh, is that that? Is that that animation with the with the kid that cuts like a wave in half or something with his mat music? Yes, I think so. Yeah. It's about a young boy named Kubo who go who must locate a magical suit of armor worn by his late father in order to defeat a vengeful spirit from the past. Well, Directed that by sounds Travis like Knight. <laughs> I knew you were reading the thing. <laughs> oh gosh. I was like, wait, that's that's well, that's well read, that's well read. What the hell? Well so, rehearsed. But so, uh, he was um, just reading it. What interests you about this particular film or animation? Uh, we, we were looking at it at work, and the trailer looks really awesome, and the animation looks really awesome. What about he uses the um, while my guitar gently weeps, or an orchestrated version of that song to for the, in the trailer? Looks pretty good. Was there any guitar in the orchestrated version of while my guitar gently weeps? I can't <laughs> <laughs> that silence I love that. <laughs> um wait is this <laughs> looking for irony everywhere you look but um, yeah yeah so you what what interests you about this particular one huh what what specifically interests you about this one I like the fact that it's I, I, it looks like the weapon is more well, it looks like he's got a sword in this picture I'm looking at now but I thought like it looked like the weapon was more about music and using music to defeat people. All right, so you're interested in using music as a weapon? Yes, a deadly, deadly weapon. The tuba reigns supreme above all. <laughs> Why? Because you play the tuba. So they don't wear shoes. Here's here's an interesting little bit of trivia for you. This idea has been explored in other media, but my favourite example <coughs> is in a Doctor Who story, and uh, in that story. Uh, Alexi Sale plays a, a, a video jockey, a, a VJ, and uh, he develops a gun which shoots sound waves, which is actually concentrated samples of rock and roll. Okay. So he uses highly concentrated sounds of a rock and roll recording to blow up Daleks. It's a dubstep gun from Saints Row 4, though. Yeah, I was about to say <laughs> something about that. Thank you. <laughs> What's that? It's a gun that li like blasts sound from dubstep, so when the dri the beat drops, everything dies. <laughs> oh. Well, everyone dances and dies. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Everyone yeah. dances and dies. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Talking talking about cartoons. You're not really talk bad. about cartoons from like the Vanos crew, are you? No, no. no. Okay. Why would I do that? Just, you said we're well, talking about cartoons, and that was one of my. Problems. Yeah, no, because there's a there's a Disney movie coming out soon. I'm trying to remember. I can't remember the title of it. I know the Rock's in it, and he plays the a rock. demigod apparently. Huh? The Rock is in it. Yeah, the Dwayne Johnson. What's he? What what sort of role is it? Is he a, a hard bitten cop? 
looking for. No, 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 no. He's a, apparently he plays a Polynesian. Uh, oh, no. Thank you. That's that's the movie. What's the movie? Yeah, he play he play uh, Mona. It's called Mona. Yeah, Mona. Yeah. It's an upcoming 2016 American 3D and computer animated musical fantasy comedy adventure film produced by Walt Disney. <laughs> Walt Disney's dead. <laughs> he came back. <laughs> Just for this movie, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "Shit, man, Polynesian princess. We, d I need to be awake for this. <laughs> I need to be awake for this instead of alive." Okay. <laughs> He's just been asleep for like. He's been encouraging freeze, and they just re re revived his head so he could yeah. produce his movie. Yeah, There's nothing right. about the name that his company's named after him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. So yeah, that, that looks, looks interesting. Yeah. That looks interesting, and the fact that they keep on raving about how it's their very first Polynesian princess. So, and are they planning on having more Polynesian princesses? Do you think? Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, they've already done um, Avalon or whatever that's called, whatever Avalon. she's called. Huh? What's Avalon about? Oh, it's a, it's a Hispanic princess, and she's um. I'm gonna call it, it's all like magic and you know it's just basically the same old crap that they have <laughs> like apparent no apparently uh, what the glimpse that I saw was uh, her parents die her grandparents and her sister get teleported into a painting that they get stuck in forever then uh, an evil sorceress puts her in a charm bracelet or, or a charm necklace and then she's stuck in that and then it took about what was it like a like seventy five years or something, and then for her to break the spell or something, and then she got out and now she's all ruling the ruling her empire that she had, and she had to you know freaking uh, uh, disable or defeat that sorceress and stuff. I've Apparently, got, it's a I've movie. I got it here. I got it here. Avalon is a 2001 Japanese-Polish science fiction drama film directed by Marami Ushii and written by Kazunani Ito. It's well, about um, a, a player in an illegal virtual reality game whose senses of reality has changed. Oh, wait a second, this is the wrong one. Oh, here Yeah, it is. clearly the wrong one. <laughs> Avalon is a 1990 drama film directed by Barry Levinson. It's the first Still clearly the wrong one. <laughs> you want to get to the right one, buddy? <laughs> okay. Right. Here we go. Uh, here we go. I swear, if you say something about the future, I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> Consider for a moment the term nuclear family. It reflects the goal where we aspire to... I don't know where we're talking about. This is All right, this is Freaks to sign it out. Um, <laughs> okay, Freaks, so here's the important question. Yeah, well, well. So this is a Disney movie, right? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Who is the animal sidekick? Which movie? Avalon? Oh, oh. Okay, well, this is going to be a bit... This is going to be difficult because guess what? It's uh, like a fantasy sort of... It's like... It's supposed to be an Hispanic sort of uh, fantasy animal. Uh -huh. You know how like... You know how like uh, uh, in Chinese it's like a oh. drag and then when it's... It's the one where else. she's that water thing, isn't it? That water thing is her friend. Like the water? I see uh, it. Uh, no, well, no, actually, she has like a flying leopard. A flying leopard? Yeah, it's a, it's like a leopard with wings, and I was like, what the hell? I thought it was a movie, it's Alina. What? It's Alina. <laughs> Is it Alina? Seriously? Elena. Oh, no, Elena. Elena oh. And, the no, uh, uh, and the secret of Avalor. Avalor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Something. <laughs> I don't like this shit. What do you mean? <laughs> Get the hell out of my face. <laughs> so here you are, Buster Picardi's jobs. I can't even get the fucking name of the film right. <laughs> it can't be it's not a film, it's a TV series. It's a film too. That's why they had to start the TV series, because of the film. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know about this film, I haven't heard of it. If, well, if Picardi hasn't that. heard of it, it can't be real, right? It's, yeah. it's no. new, but I'm pretty sure it's only a TV series. I don't think they're making a film out of it, actually. No, they made a film of it, so They've it made became a, a TV series. Yeah. When did they make the film? I don't know. They. <laughs> I, 
Okay, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's point out that Lilo and Stitch was a TV series. Never made a film at all. That's how it didn't come up to become a TV series. Lilo and Stitch was already a film first. But oh, I it. really? And I didn't realize. I didn't realize. I did that before. TV series. Normally, if they make a TV series out of a Disney movie, the Disney movie is normally massive, like Frozen or something like that. Or Lilo massive. and Stitch. Massive. Because when they came out, it was pretty big. It doesn't have to be massive. Like, All I'm finding about Eleanor of Avalor is that it's a TV yeah. series. I'm not finding anything about a movie or the fact that it was a movie to begin with. Oh. Okay. Well, I saw it was a movie, so I will. It might have been a TV movie. Like Quite sweet. possibly. Who knows? It might have been an hour-long, like, big movie thing. I don't know. Maybe it was direct to VHS. Probably. Do you remember when Disney used to do that all the time? They used to do, like, every sequel to a, like, a big budget uh, Disney animation was, like, straight into VHS? Yeah. yeah that's because every single bu- um, sequel was, like, like, half the cost and... <laughs> One thing I always thought was hilarious, like, when they did, like, the Aladdin sequels and the Aladdin TV series, they obviously couldn't get Robin Williams to do the voice of the genie, so who did they get instead? Dan oh. Costello. Dan Castellaneta, the voice of Homer freaking Simpson. <laughs> to the voice of the genie. And, like, when I was a kid... He really needed the money. When I was a kid, <laughs> like, it, he, he was passable, you know. You go, oh, it's the genie. But you look at it now and you're like, why is Homer Simpson the genie in Aladdin? It sounds... He actually said it was... He said it was difficult to do his voice. I thought that was interesting. I've actually so. never watched Aladdin 2. I've only seen number one. I didn't know there was a second one. You haven't seen The Return of Jafar? Oh, and uh, you haven't seen The Prince of Thieves either, have you? No. Okay. <laughs> Poor deprived child! <sighs> yep. Uh, well, see, Aladdin was one of the, the, fran- the Disney franchises that I actually grew up with and really enjoyed. Yeah, I loved Aladdin as well. Mm. But um, the other one. Too I bad it wasn't a TV it. series. Oh, wait, it was. A TV what? series. It was, that's right, I forgot, you, sorry. You just wrecked yourself. <laughs> you, Ned, like, you put in, you're putting everyone else out of a job now, Freakster. You're wrecking yourself. <laughs> uh, the other I can one hardly I really enjoyed, hear you. <laughs> the other one I really enjoyed as a kid uh, that Disney did was Gargoyles. Yes, Gargoyles. I loved Gargoyles. That I could never finish awesome that. Awesome series. It was fantastic. Like it, it was a lot darker than what you would normally expect from a Disney series, mm-hmm. and it, like it, it felt really like. You know, watching this as like an eight-year-old, you felt like this was a really grown-up show. Like it had a similar kind of tone to the Batman the Animated Series. Yes. And uh, you know, you had Goliath was the, like the leader of the the gargoyles, and you know, there was a lot of action in that series. And it's still to this day, it baffles me why they haven't released it on DVD yet. I thought I saw once at the movies that there was like a trailer that they were going to make it into a movie. Uh, I think there's been there's been rumours that they've wanted to make yeah. it into a movie for a long time. But, but I think I've seen it. a trailer, like one of the last times that we went to the movies. Hmm. So not that long ago, there was a trailer for the Gargoyles. For a movie. Well, I remember reading. No, I just remember everything being duck themed back then. Yeah, Darkwing Duck. Duck Tales. Duck Tales. Count um, Duckula. Tailspin. Tailspin. Tailspin was funny because it. You had kind of, like they they incorporated different characters from different areas of the 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 Disney animated canon. So you had Baloo from the Jungle Book, as a pilot. Yeah. Um, and then you had like Launchpad was in there as well, and King Louis ran the the company that chartered the planes and shit like that. And uh, actually, to tell you the truth, that the that one episode where he played a character, like um, I forget what the son was called, the like the co-pilot that he had. I keep on remembering like calling Kibble, him Little Bridge. Something like that. Yeah, it was that. like Little Britches. He keep he keeps yeah. on calling him Little Britches. Yeah. Yeah, he had like a he had like a super he had he was a fan of a superhero like called Bullethead or something like that. And funnily enough, when I looked at it, it strangely looked like the Rocketeer, and that's what got me back into mm. trying to watch the Rocketeer movie. I've never ever watched that movie from beginning to end. 
What, I Rocketeer? Yeah, I, I can't get through it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you own it? Do I own it? No. Okay. That's um, why he hasn't watched it. Yeah, and why would I buy a movie I have no intention of watching? <laughs> I've got I've got more than enough movies as it. You know what? One a movie that I revisited recently and uh, it's still one of my absolute favourites is Bad Eggs. Oh God. Yeah, Bad oh, Eggs. God. Tony Martin, uh, Mick Malloy, and Bob Franklin are the two leads in the film. Yeah. Is that that? Thing that you showed me ages ago, that movie about like the police and how they were, he like shot a dead body and stuff. Yep, exactly okay. that one. All right. Ciao. So for a second there, I thought you were talking about <laughs> bad taste. <laughs> the Peter Jackson one? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One of my favorite movies is The Breakfast Club. Don't you forget about me. No. You know what? The, out of all the moments in that film that everyone remembers, the one thing. I can remember from the breakfast club the one the one image that stands out in my mind is Ali Sheedy having done that really awesome image the the, the drawing of the house and then she like ruffles her hair and makes a dandruff yeah. at the, the the snowfall in the picture yes that was awesome so, she's like Shh, sh, sh, sh. yeah validation for our um, dry scalped brethren and, and sisterhood uh, we don't you get you can enough. make it snow my favorite bit in the Breakfast Club is probably um, when he's doing the imitations, actually, mm. of um, when he's trying to do the imitation of Brian's home life, and then he does one of his. Mm. So when Bender, the criminal, does the uh, um, does the imitation of Brian, the the brain, the brain's home life, and then he does an imitation of his home life. Uh, that's my favourite part. I actually have The Breakfast Club's ho the whole script. I have it in the bookshelf downstairs. There you go. So, you going to make Picardy read it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, hey, you gotta at least I'm not going to make him I'm not going to make him read Finding Nemo either, which I also have downstairs in the bookshelf. Are you at least going to make him watch the movie? I've watched it. He's watched the movie. Has he? Have yeah. you watched the yeah. movie Picardy? Yeah. What did you yeah. What did you like about it? Hmm. Ooh, I think I may have. No, there was, there was no breakfast during the club. <laughs> there was no breakfast during the club. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll give you the horns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> have you seen it, Freakster? Uh, no comment. No comment. You don't want to incriminate yourself. Yeah, pretty much. I'll tell you one thing. Watching the, I watched The Breakfast Club, and then we went and saw Pitch Perfect, and it just made the movie make so much more sense. Which one? Pitch Perfect. Oh, okay. First one, not. The <laughs> like, okay, wait, how what? did The Breakfast Club make Pitch Perfect? Make the whole subplot of Pitch about in Pitch Perfect about The Breakfast Club. What? There is a subplot. <laughs> In okay. fact, the last song they merged together and actually one of the big parts of the song is Don't You Forget About Me. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. The the guy, yeah, okay. No, I get you. Well, you know, the thing is, I'm not big on musicals. I don't know, The Music Man was a really strict and tight plot. Is that because you needed to rehearse very strictly with your trombone? I just don't like The Music Man. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we were in high school and the drama teacher always used to rag on you for that. <laughs> Every time you walked in the room, 76 trombones in the big parade. Yeah, I got to go to, I got to, go to movie world for that. <laughs> but I'm happy. Then we found out that there was a Music Man ice cream parlor over there. Oh, and you know what the, song, the only song they played in that ice cream parlor was? Was that song? 76 trombones. Yeah. They hated it more than we did. <laughs> so we laughed. <laughs> and everyone died a little bit on the inside. Yeah. They closed that store down. <laughs> <laughs> Freakster. As we're talking about kind of like uh, favorite movies and TV shows from the past. Yeah. What would you say growing up was your favorite uh, TV show or movie? 
I don't know. I because of my my checkered history, I can't much say about that. I have Your no idea. History. Like I get no because like you know. Have you been watching you some like um, naughty films? No, what? No, man. I've been mean, playing a lot of chess. I've been mean, playing a lot of chess. What are you talking about? Uh, there was a there was an old TV show. I'm trying to remember the name of it now. I think it was like, uh, it was like little little lady or something, or little robot or something like that. And it was it was basically about a guy who who was uh, hired to create uh, um, a Small realistic wonder. Small Wonder. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's the one that I, lo- I enjoyed the most. Um, a funny thing is, I never actually got to the end of it. So that kind of that kind of. I don't think it's finished. Properly. I think it's the stop. Yeah. No, I know, but I never got to like whatever season it ended on. That's what I mean. I, I think I got like, I think I was like jumping around different uh, episodes of each season. Mm-hmm. It didn't actually show in succession, so I never got to see what the ending was. Well, on that note, um, I would like to say a big, big thank you to all of you who have uh, have tuned in and listened to this uh, very special podcast with... Uh, powwow. Well, it's a powwow podcast, you see. I'd like to thank very much uh, Picardi and <laughs> Freakster and Crybabe for joining me. So we had a we had a we had a powwow podcast with Picardi. Damn! <laughs> Who picked the pickle pe- peppers? <laughs> a pickle pe- peppers Picardi picked. Oh, but, um, at, yeah. the powwow pickle, pickle, pickle. <laughs> at the powwow podcast. At the powwow podcast. They went yeah. to pickle pickle peppers Peter Butter pick. Oh damn! Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> I think that intellectual debate about Ghostbusters versus John Cena was. The- Oh, that was the topper. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Definitely everyone's going to tune in for that. Absolutely. (laughs) All right. Well, um, I'm going to put up a couple of links here. Okay, so you'll see on the screen here some thumbnails. If you click on those thumbnails, you'll be able to go to a a few videos. I've actually linked it to um, some of the things on our Mixed Nuts gaming channel. Now, Freaksy, you've just set up a channel, haven't you? Did I? Yeah, that's right. I did. Holy yeah. crap! I totally forgot about that. Yeah, no, I, no, I didn't. I was, I was actually gonna promote it, but then I thought, I'm, I'm, I thought, nah. Doctor Collins got this handled. He'll, he'll, he'll know. He'll, he'll, he'll kick it in there somewhere. In actual fact, I was like, I was like, don't, don't. Uh, if you're gonna put links up, don't put the one that uh, Bacardi sent me. A really <laughs> disturbing one. All right. um, you said that but, to yourself. Uh, but I didn't send crap to myself. <laughs> She sent us all the same link, and I got it, and it was not the same one that you sent. I I got that. I got that. Um, I'm actually going to pop up here exactly what Freeze is talking about. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's just... No. 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 People subscribe to it, that'd be awesome, and then uh, just, you know, I'll... And eventually, if he gets enough subscribers, he might actually put a video on the channel. Yeah, or or uh, re- in reverse, I might actually put a video on there, and then people will subscribe. One of the two. Mm. All right. So, uh, we Suicide Squad comes out this week, mm-hmm. and uh, we we'll, we will see it. Some of us will see it, or all of us will see it. We'll find out. And uh, when we do, we will post a review podcast, and we'll tell you what we think. Yeah. Does that sound exciting? So we're going to wrap that up now. We're going to wrap it up. Um, yeah. So that yeah. people can actually go on with their lives. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, We're gonna let John, uh, John, John Cena wrap it up because he he can rap apparently. Yes. Uh, that that would be the perfect thing. So, who's going to end this episode of Doctor Collins' Power Podcast? John Cena. <laughs>